Hello, and welcome to Know Before You Go, a program of the Dominican Central Province of St. Albert the Great that allows us to take a look ahead at the upcoming weekend's readings. I am Father Jim Marchanda, Provincial of the Chicago Dominicans, and am very happy to be with you once again as we approach the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Can you believe that we are this late in the liturgical year? In just six more weeks, we're going to be starting up the new Advent season. Can you imagine that we have survived these many months and these many Sundays? We have a reminder that God has been with us and continues to be with us. For this Sunday, the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we have challenging, challenging readings that I'm going to ask you to sit with and to ponder and meditate on throughout the day, maybe throughout the week. The first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel. The second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. And the third from the Gospel of St. Matthew. And they will challenge all of us at our very core. The first reading from Ezekiel says very simply, whose ways are unfair? Are God's ways unfair? Or are humanity's ways unfair? Asks a good question. And it's something we have to think about. And then in order to help us understand some of the, the, the trouble with issues of fairness and honesty and integrity, the church gives us this Gospel of St. Matthew that has Jesus telling a story to the Pharisees about two sons. A man had two sons, and he said to his first son that he wanted him to go into the vineyard and work. And the son said, no, I won't go, through a little temper tantrum. But later on, he went. And he goes to the second son, and he tells him that he wants him to go into the vineyard and work. And the son says, sure, fine, whatever you ask, Pop. But he doesn't go. And Jesus says, who was the one that was the most faithful. And they said, the first son, who carried on, who threw a tantrum, who said no, who refused to do it, but eventually came around. And then Jesus says that famous line, I tell you, even tax collectors and prostitutes are going to get into heaven before you. Oh my God, the challenge of that line. What is he saying to us? What does he want us to understand from this story and that powerful sentence? I think Jesus is making a case against lip service to God. Our lip service isn't enough, my friends, you know that. Lip service is not enough. He's making a case against people that cry, Lord, Lord, and then expect everything to fall into their lap, expect everything to go their way, the way they want it. And he says in another part of the gospel, it is not those who cry, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones who do the will of my Father in heaven. He's not looking for lip service. He's looking for the integrity of our prayer that finds itself in action, that finds its fulfillment in how we live. He's making a case against hypocrisy and not appearing to be holy and connected to God, but not really living holiness and unity and communion with God. We're all challenged to that, aren't we? We're all challenged. Both of those sons had the wrong attitude. One threw a temper tantrum and said, I wouldn't do it. The other said, oh, sure, whatever he thought his father wanted to hear. We all start out that way. There is such an inclination to self-interest in our lives. We're born that way. We're raised in the early months and years of our lives, always getting our own way. We have too many of us that have what's in it for me attitudes. 
Too many that still think the sun rises and sets on me alone. Too much staunch individualism that is destroying our unity. That is in total opposition to the gospel. It's why the church gives us the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Spend time with this reading today. Paul says, brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, listen to that. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing, do, not, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Isn't that powerful? And then he goes on with the magnificent, magnificent hymn to Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped, but instead freely gave himself and spent himself caring for others. Spend time with that reading today. What a challenge it is. What a challenge. Do nothing out of selfishness, and vain glory, and humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. Don't you wish others in the world today would spend time with this reading and hear that challenge? Quite frankly, my friends, with all the political unrest in the United States today, and even though they are of different religions, we've got a Catholic, we've got a Jewish person, and we've got two Baptists, I so wish that Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi and Lindsey Graham would all hear that reading do nothing out of selfishness and vain glory and humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. How we need to hear that. How you and I need to hear that in this time and in these days. How we need to hear that and think about how we need to act on it in relation to the plight of immigrants right in our own country. How you and I, in our prayer, need to wrestle with this teaching and this reality as we consider our response to victims of racism in our country. How you and I need to grow into what this word is challenging and calling forth from us and how we respond to victims of senseless crime and violence and what we might do on behalf of the people who have suffered so much and are continuing to suffer from fires and hurricanes and earthquakes and wars and starvation. There is so much suffering in the world and there are so many millions suffering even more than we are suffering. Do nothing out of selfishness, out of vain glory. Humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. My friends, this weekend's readings are tough, but they're so gorgeous in their invitation for us to participate in the life of God. They give us the mind of God, which is anything but selfish. You and, our, you and I are invited into that mind and into that heart and into that very same level of selflessness. God bless you and your families.